Hello and thanks for joining us for today's NYSAC news video update. My name is Ryan Gregoire. I'm your association's legislative director. And today I am uh, once again joined by Dave Lucas, the director of finance and intergovernmental affairs. Dave, thanks for joining again today. Well, thank you. For our listeners this morning, we're going to be talking about the health and human services impact that the governor outlined in his state fiscal year 2022 executive budget proposal. And uh, before we get into what is included in this year's budget, I did want to highlight a couple things for the members. Uh, one of the big fights that we had last year, Dave, was around Medicaid. The governor proposed what was called Part R of the Health and Mental Hygiene Article 7 bill. It was a three-part proposal. We collectively, with all of you, fought really hard to kill that at the end of the day. Thankfully, the legislature did agree with us. Uh, they created a new program called the Distress Hospital Fund, which we talked about in an earlier video. If you want to learn more about that, uh, go check out our website and, and take a look at that prior video. But thankfully, uh, the way the governor has presented this budget, Dave, it doesn't have that same impact to the Medicaid program. He's not shifting new Medicaid costs onto counties. And in fact, one thing that I wanted to highlight before I, before I go to you, Dave, for the listeners is the, the Biden administration, the president, just came out with a statement yesterday talking about extending the federal declaration for the COVID-19 emergency through the end of 2021. Now, what that means for New York State and counties is the enhanced FMAP that Senator Schumer championed in the coronavirus um, first piece of legislation for the coronavirus relief last year in March extended that EF map benefit for New York State. It increased the threshold from 50% to 56.2%, which nets counties a tremendous amount of money. Dave, I don't know if you want to share what that impact looks like for us and sure. how important that is to yeah. make sure that continues. It's important for two reasons. I mean, first off is the state gets the 6.2% benefit and it's worth anywhere between 800 million and a billion dollars for each quarter that that emergency is in place. So to the degree that that's in place through the end of 2021, it provides billions of dollars to the state financial plan, which means they don't have to do as many deep cuts as they propose, and this is new information since the budget came out. It also means about $160, $165 million per quarter for New York City and the counties. About $100 million of that's for New York City, about $60, $65 million per quarter is for the county. So it's a pretty substantial uh, benefit, and it's federal dollars that flow down to the state and then are passed through down to the counties. And this is really important because as we go through this COVID-19 pandemic, our caseloads for individuals who receive human services programs are going to continue to increase. That's likely to happen. So this is one ability that the federal government has provided to the state and to the counties to help adjust for the increased costs that we're gonna see on, on the human services side. So let's talk a little bit about human services and the health program that's outlined in the governor's budget, Dave. Um, for our listeners out there, again, I want to just remind everyone that NYSAC submitted a very comprehensive list of recommendations, policy ideas for the governor to consider when he put together the budget this year, which included a series of human service proposals that we gathered from social service commissioners across the state. We asked the counties to submit those ideas, and then we sent those up to the state two of which were included in the governor's budget. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about some of those impacts to the human services program, Dave, and, sure. and our recommendations? Yeah, the, there was quite a few recommendations. I'm going to highlight a couple here um, that were accepted by the, the in the budget by the governor and the, the executive staff. Um, one is extending the population that's eligible for what they call Chafee funding at the federal level. It basically extends the amount of time um, that you could draw down funds um, for for children, well, young adults up to age 23, and it's all federal money. There's no cost to the state. Uh, it's just another source of revenue. And they've also, something else they've done, a couple years ago, it was maybe three, four years ago, the states changed 
how they trained um, child welfare um, staff at the local level and other people that dealt with child protective and other types of um, services in, in difficult situations. It takes a lot of in-person training to make sure officials have the skills uh, and the resources they need to, to deal with a family in crisis and a child in crisis. Um, the state built a training center here over in Rensselaer County, Rensselaer, city of Rensselaer right across the street, where they train these county officials and they have to come in from wherever they are, from someone in Chautauqua or the tip of Suffolk, they would have to come to the state, do the training in person for a, which could be weeks at a time. And it's very, just really difficult for people to get here and do the training. Prior to that, people would get training in their community through a university system or a program. Right. You may have been familiar with it when you were at the, at the county, at the county uh, yeah. deputy administrator. Um, now they're going to go back to a more remote learning aspect to it, at least during the pandemic. But we've been asking for a few years that you know we really need to go back to that model because um, it just saves a lot of time and resources for the counties not to have to have people out of the office for weeks at a time to do this training. Right. Uh, it's just a very difficult. So, yeah, for our, for the legislators, county supervisors, administrators who are listening in today, that is a, a very important tool for your children and family services teams. The case workers, CPS workers, have to travel to Albany right now to get this training, and it's months at a time that eats away at your staff's ability to respond to child welfare and human service caseload. They can now do that in-home. They're going to be able to do that in-home through a virtual format. It's a huge benefit to counties. It's something that is a small policy change, but it has a big impact at the local level. So uh, with that, I do want to remind everyone, if you're looking for our resources on the state budget, we have two items uh, on our website, www.nysac.org forward slash NYS budget. And that is our county budget impact report and our county budget scorecard. The scorecard is a two page document. It has a green thumbs up and a red thumbs down for good things and bad things. Go and take a look at it. Um, it's a great tool to use when you're talking to your state lawmakers back home. And then the other thing I want to draw everyone's attention to is our lobby day. And Dave, we're going to be holding two virtual lobby days coming up in March, on March 10th and March 11th. You can go to our website to register if you're interested. Uh, registration is open for those events, www.nysac.org forward slash lobby day. So with that, Dave, were there any other items you wanted to highlight for our listeners? Before there we there is one thing. It was It's a... It's a little obscure in the budget, but it potentially provides some fiscal savings for counties. Is this currently the state runs youth detention facilities for troubled youth um, who can't be taken care of in the local community? There's just there, there could be issues with safety, so they go to these youth detention centers, um, and a lot of these state facilities are underutilized. They're yes. they're almost empty. So the budget proposes to close four of these. Um, these are the, OCFS facilities. Yes, they're the youth detention facilities. The, the big deal here is the counties pay for the cost of sending the, the kids that might be from their county to these state facilities, and they put all the costs for the entire system into our billing. Yes. So these are like $1,200 to $1,800 a day right. per diems for one of these kids in these facilities, and part of the reason the costs are so high is they have under, underutilized facilities in the system. So as they take those offline, tens of millions of dollars in costs are gonna come out of the system and hopefully that'll trickle down to the counties um, to help lower costs for us. It's, it should reduce the rates. Yes, it should, right. we hope, we hope so. Um, this is the second round of closures um, with all the, the criminal justice reforms they've done, the system has changed quite a bit. So right. it's just an important one there. All right, well, thank you again for tuning in to today's NYSAC News video update. We look forward to seeing you again on future episodes. Thank you. Have a good day.